Our upcoming events are here on Wednesday. The Web and Mobile Dev Committee is going to have an Among Us night. Um, it just like our regular game nights, it's just that the Web and Mobile Dev Committee is hosting it. If you are not in the Web and Mobile Dev Committee and you don't know much about it, I would highly recommend attending. Um, that's going to be on Discord and it's going to be from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, on Friday, we are going to have our mental health and engineering workshop uh, with CAPS. They are going to come out and give you guys some advice and talk about the importance of mental health and stuff like that. Um, that's going to be from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And our um, the meeting link is there. And just like every other Saturday, we're going to have our study session. That's going to be on Discord um, from 8 to 10 p.m. If you haven't done so already, you can join our Discord on this link or pressing this. And then um, all of our important links are gonna be on our link tree like normal. Uh, this slide deck is also gonna be available later on on the website and so is the meeting. So you'll be able to press on everything once the meeting is over. Hi everyone. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Trishna and I am the president of the Society of Women Engineers. Uh, we're basically a parallel organization in terms of the women's side uh, for all the fields of engineering. Some of our upcoming events are on the left-hand side. We have our Women in STEM Diversity panel on Wednesday with ACMW. Uh, we also have a fun little movie night on Friday, which is just gonna be us uh, hanging out and watching a movie. Uh, from six to nine on Friday. And then we have our fourth GBM coming up next week with Gartner. Uh, Gartner is gonna be talking a little bit about their company and walking through some of their projects actually. So that'll be next Wednesday. And then on the right-hand side is some of our social media. I highly recommend joining our Slack. And if you're interested in any of our upcoming events, including our development workshops, I would recommend visiting our website at ucfc.org. And I think with that, we can probably pass it on over to Cecil, uh, yeah. if you wanna go ahead. All right, hello, ACMW and SWE. It's a pleasure to be here. I think this is my second official um, partnership with you all um, since I've been recruiting at UCF. So it's always a pleasure to be in the presence of you all. Um, UCF always shows up and it always warms my heart. Um, I think this is um, one of the largest virtual events that I've been to outside of the hackathon. So I just wanna commend you all so much for showing up and being present. Um, I don't have a lot, um, I don't have a lot to present on, but today what we really wanted to do was provide a little glimpse into opportunities outside of software engineering as it relates to who we are as Facebook. Um, so we call this She Codes, but we just want to provide you with other engineering perspectives from a woman's point of view um, as it relates to Facebook. So what I want to do is just, um, one, I'm gonna share my screen. I have four slides um, and only one of them have like really heavy content, but I definitely want to, I'm gonna start off with just going over a few things, um, then I'm gonna introduce our panelists. I'm gonna ask them a few questions that I prepared. And then I definitely want you all to um, feel free to open up the, the panel for you all. We have Wanhee and we have Sineha here um, representing from Facebook. So welcome, I see you two um, on camera, so you're here. So just to um, start, if you all have not checked in, oh, I guess I should share my screen, right? One second. All right, so if you have not done so already, please check in with us on Piazza. Um, this is how we stay engaged with you. Um, this is a great opportunity for you um, just to stay connected with us as we are looking for interns this year, um, as we're hosting new events. We always refer back to our Piazza, to our Piazza check-ins, just to engage with students that we meet on campus. So please check in on Piazza. I'll give you um, a few, like one minute, 
few seconds, 60 seconds to check in on Piazza. Once you've done so, can you give me a hand clap on the screen or a thumbs up on the screen to be a little interactive? All right, I see one clap, two claps, three claps. Okay. All right, four, they're coming in. And I do want to say thank you, ACM and Sweet, for allowing me. I saw the one um, where the one picture where it said no dudes. So thank you for allowing me to be a nice dude in your, <laughs> in your meeting. All right. So um, again, I'll post it in there. All right. So to introduce myself, my name is Cecil Johnson. I'm in that. Um, I'm one of the diversity recruiters here at Facebook. And my primary role is to go out and find diverse talent um, for different opportunities at Facebook, mainly software engineering. And this year it's software engineering and production engineering. I'm also one of the main point of contacts for our FBU program. So we have any class, if we have any sophomores graduating the class of 2023, our Facebook university for analytics applications are now open so i will post the application down in um in the chat box a little later on during that panel if you are interested um and our fbu for analytics program is for individuals who are interested in maybe having a career in data analytics or data science amazing program again it's only for the class of 2023 which should be sophomores at this particular point. Um, and applications do close next month on November 10th. So definitely get your applications in. We always receive a great, um, a great influx of students from UCF. And you can also find the applications on your school's Handshake account. So just goes into um, who we are. So again, we are Facebook. Um, many of you know us as a social media company. Most of you may know us as a as social network. So we are an advertising social media company that really believes in connecting the world and bringing the world closer together. Um, and people ask, how do we do that? And we do that by these five pillars that you see here um, on your screen. One, building social value, making sure that our platforms have some type of social impact on the communities that we're serving, ensuring that's a platform for all individuals um, around the world to use no matter what gifts you were born with. So one of my favorite videos that really encompasses um, what, what building social value is, is Facebook for the blind. The young lady that you see here, um, she's visually impaired, and she said she called her mom and said, hey, mom, I see the pictures that you posted um, on Facebook. And our amazing team was able to create artificial intelligence to read the pictures and read um, the things that other people may be able to see on Facebook so she too can enjoy our platforms. And it's a really heart-wrenching video that I love. It's one of my favorite, favorite videos. So if you've been to one of my presentations before, you've heard my spiel about this video because it really like moves my heart. And then our next, um, our next pillar is moving fast. Um, as you all know, Facebook is a fairly young company. Um, I would say our company has grown since I've been at Facebook from 10,000. Now we have up to over 50,000 team members. So we really believe in moving fast. If there are ideas that you want um, implemented or ideas that you want to see come to fruition, we ask that you move fast. Let's see if it lands and if it lands. Let's help it get off the ground. So we truly, truly believe in a culture where you don't have to go up a lot of loops and change to get things done. Be innovative and take action um, on the things that you're interested in. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite ones is being bold. And I take that personally as I can be whomever I want um, at Facebook and show up and be able to do my work in a way that entices me to get things done and in order to connect with other people. So as, um, as a black man at Facebook, I appreciate that because I can be myself. And as women, you can be yourself. So wherever cultural identity um, you identify as, you can come to Facebook and build that culture and be bold and exactly to who you are. Um, so if you know who we are as an organization or if you've ever been to our offices, you see people from all walks of life. You see people with all hair colors, tattoos, people who wear dress up, dress down. 
It's really about being bold and don't and not being afraid of standing out amongst the crowd. The next one is being open. Um, we know that the world of engineering is always developing and the world of social media is always changing. And just the world that we live in is always changing and evolving. Um, so being open to new opportunities, being open to risks um, that we always, especially at Facebook, that we always encounter. Um, so come in with an open mind because you never know what opportunities may present themselves to you. Last but not least, focusing on impact. We want to be strategic in the things that we are doing at Facebook. We want to be strategic in the audience since, um, that we are captivating. So we ask everything that we do, focus on the impact. How does this impact our, how does this impact our users? How does this impact our team members and our employees? And how does this most importantly impact the individuals that we created these platforms for? So always keeping the the end goal in mind as we're creating new adventures, um, because we want to make sure that everything on our platforms is useful um, for the people that we're serving. Any questions? Okay. Um, our panelists are going to get that question a little down the line. So think about that. All right. So without further ado, I would like to um, introduce our two panelists. Um, Sneha, am I pronouncing your name right? Sneha? Yes, that's correct. All right, perfect. Sneha and Wahi. Um, so Sneha is a production engineer at Facebook, um, and she's going to share her journey. And then we have Wahi. Uh, Wahi is a manager at Facebook, um, and she's also going to share her perspective. So without further ado, can you all give me some virtual hand claps? All right, so I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, so that way, when these individuals are speaking, you can see you can see their faces. All right. Um, I think I think this um, us having this event is really on par um, to events that are taking place. I believe next week or within the next two weeks, we're having our Women at Conference. Um, right now, we are in our Pride at Conference, which means if you identify as LGBTQ plus. Um, there is a day of learning and service um, that the company brings all of our team members who identify in that particular group, just as a day of learning and building community. Last week, if you can see my screen, this is from our Black Community Summit, which took place last week. Um, so we're on, we're on the cuffs of entering our Women's Summit, um, where we have phenomenal women that are helping move things and break things and making a change in the atmosphere um, that we have here at Facebook. So without further ado, I want to flip it over to our two panelists. Um, and I'm going to ask that Sineha, maybe you introduce yourself first. Tell us a little bit, little bit about yourself. What do you do at Facebook? Um, what is your favorite, what is your favorite thing about working at Facebook? And any other information you would like to share? Sure. Um, hi everyone. I'm Sneha. Uh, I'm a production engineer at Facebook. I have uh, been with Facebook for about uh, three and a half years now, um, and I'm part of the uh, production engineering location platform team. Um, so what my team does is it's responsible for maintaining this reliability, scalability. Um, efficiency and improving the efficiency and performance of location products. Um, what my favorite thing about working for a Facebook is that um, it's, it's something that Cecil uh, mentioned uh, earlier, that I can be uh, who I am, I can be myself, and uh, I don't have to worry about what others are going to think if um, if I ask dumb questions, if I be uh, if I talk I speak out loud about something that I don't like, um, all of these the openness is something and the culture of Facebook is something that I really love about uh, working at Facebook. In addition to the work, of course. Great, thank you so so much, Wahi. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Wanhee. Um, I am currently a data science manager at Facebook, but before that, I was a data scientist for three years, um, became a manager this year. Um, before Facebook, I did my PhD in economics. So I have a slightly different background, pretty unconventional among data scientists, and I can talk about that a little more later. Um, the, the work that my team does, uh, the problem space, uh, somewhat similar to Sneha, is performance and reliability issues, but within Facebook family of apps. 
So my team is the team that builds ML algorithms to help Swiss software engineers um, detect and debug any performance and reliability issues with apps. Um, to think about my favorite thing about working at Facebook, uh, and I say this at the beginning of the interview or at the end of the interview all the time, is the people. Um, I feel like I've been at places where I am working on interesting problems, but I right now I'm working with people who are not only very talented, but are very considerate, who care for each other and has have a sense of community. And that's something that I really cherish about working at Facebook. Right. Thank you both so much for your introductions. Um, so we want to dive in a little bit more and talk me about your journey. So I would love if I was just able to wake up you know, being born into where I am now. So let's talk about your journey a little bit. Tell us how did you get to um, where you are now in your career? And we can start with Sneha. Okay. Um, so I was uh, born in India and I actually did my undergrad, uh, I did my schooling in a small town in uh, India where I think like there are only a very few uh, schools that are really good. And I was lucky that uh, I, my parents did send me to one of those schools, which uh, kind of encouraged um, speaking out like all these different competitions from school level. I think it's, it's not a norm. It's just that you uh, end up doing it only if you're part of some really good school. So I started off uh, taking part in uh, math Olympiads, uh, science Olympiads, and kind of like started developing interest towards uh, mathematics a lot. Um, I know it's a typical Indian thing, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's somehow like, I, I actually loved uh, math from the time I was a kid. Always used to get uh, sent in math and I used to be so proud of it. And slowly somehow that developed into uh, an interest towards engineering. And um, so I did my engineering uh, in India. In I did my undergrad in electrics, electrical and, uh, sorry, electronics and communication engineering. I always get confused uh, because I also did ECE uh, for my master's here in the US and that is electrical and computer engineering. So I actually worked for uh, two years for Cisco Systems back in India before I came to US uh, for my master's. Um, so I came uh, in 2015 to the US uh, to do my master's in uh, electrical and computer engineering. Uh, I did my master's from Ohio State. Um, and then I actually interned as a production engineering in, uh, intern at Facebook. And after my internship is when I got a uh, uh, and a return offer to come back as a, a full-time engineer. So that's how I ended up uh, being a PE at uh, Facebook. But even uh, throughout, I think one thing that I always dreamt about was that I wanted to come to US and work for Facebook. And I'm so happy at this point, just because that was my dream when I was you know, in my 20s, like early 20s, I always used to see uh, one of my senior from um, undergrad directly actually join Facebook in India. And that was a very big thing because uh, in uh, Facebook never at that point, it, this was way back in 2013, 2012, it never hired people directly from India. And one of my seniors actually got an we used to look at his Facebook posts and he was traveling all around the, um, the continent. Like he, he was in Sydney, he's in San Francisco, and then he's in um, uh, Europe. So I was like, oh my God, this is the life. Like I need to go and work at Facebook and actually like travel everywhere. Um, so I used to dream about uh, being uh, an engineer working in uh, Facebook headquarters and Somehow I actually ended up doing the, doing that. So yeah, that's that's the that's the journey. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. What about you, Wahi? All right. So to actually tell you about why I ended up in tech, it was really by accident. Um, as I said, my background is in economics. Um, and in grad school, 
I thought that I would become a consultant um, doing, you know, economics and law kind of things. Um, and actually in grad school, I was doing my research in social networks. And I reached out to an economist at FB, uh, Facebook, <laughs> FB we call it. Um, and I, I pitched an idea that I had and said, I need to work with Facebook because this is an idea I have. I think it'll, uh, it'll be interesting for you as well. And somehow I got a research internship out of that. And afterwards I returned to Facebook as a full-time employee. Um, yeah, and as I said, it's been four years uh, after starting to work at Facebook, I started picking up skills, um, other skills that I'm gonna talk about a little later, I think. And I became a manager because I'm passionate about growing people professionally in my team. And being able to do that, supporting people, um, coaching them when needed, mentoring them has been really fulfilling for me. All right, thank you so much. I think want he, you, um, you put us right on track to my next question, which is for these young aspiring engineers that are on the call with us, um, what skills would you implore them to start um, to start honing in on to be in your position or to be a data scientist or to be a production engineer? Yeah, so actually before that, I am also not from the United States. I came here for college in 2004. Oh, I just dated myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, getting used to culture has been very difficult for me, um, especially in the beginning. Um, that being said, I wanna talk first about technical skills. Um, technical skills, this goes without saying, very important. Um, having the basics down and having some special expertise that makes you different from other people, I think it's very, very important. Um, people are not people are looking for talent, but also if you have something to sell yourself on, that makes you special, right? But here I want to talk a little more about something else. So I think as important as technical skills, but something that people don't talk about often is communication skills. And this is about how you present yourself. And actually, when you're, if you're interviewing or when you're interviewing with us, um, it's actually an important factor in interviews as well. We actually look at how you communicate. Um, and I, as I said, this is actually something that I learned a little later in my career, um, how sh I should be tactical about how I communicate, how I present myself. Do I present myself as an authority in certain areas? Um, who do I communicate with and how often do I communicate and this will, of course, depend on company culture. Um, but doing this well actually prevents me from doing the work and not getting the credit for it. So that's something that I've learned a lot on and something that I would ask people to think about um, before you start working, actually, um, just really getting down how you come off, how you present yourself. Hey, Wahi, um, just to ask an another question, so what technical skills would you um, say students should focus on? Are there specific coding languages or anything like that? Yes. Um, so if people are thinking about data science, um, getting statistics down, the basics of statistics, um, experiments, any inferences related um, things, experimental inferences, such things, probably important. Also getting basics of ML down. Um, I, I don't think I need to go through them, but tree-based models, linear models, if you can, some deep learning models, those are all important. Um, the coding languages that we use are usually Python at this point. I think Python is probably the language of choice for a lot of people who are in data science. Thank you so much. Sneha, what about you? Yes, so I, I can speak about uh, what technical things that you are going to be very useful if you end up deciding um, to become a production engineer. But before I go into that, I want to give you a simple like distinction between what a production engineer is versus a software engineer. So because there are certain skills that you need for uh, for you to become a P production engineer, which is typically a PE. That's how we refer to it as. Um, so the difference between a SWE and P is P is like a hybrid role between software engineering, whereas um, uh, uh, sorry, software engineering and systems engineering. So you need some understanding of um, operating systems 
uh, and networking in addition to your the regular coding uh, and a bunch of other things. So the even I think even with the interview process, you have these additional uh, systems round in a PE interview in addition to the, the regular like the design and um, coding and other things. So for PE, you're basically flexing a different set of muscles, which is thinking out of the box and thinking in not just in terms of how do I get this uh, product uh, delivered, but in terms of like, how do I get it developed, sorry, delivered with having the utmost performance or how do I have a particular service running in um, X number of servers but I can then release this particular product entire to the entire uh, world. Uh, so basically think, think in terms of scalability and reliability in addition to just getting things uh, done. So with that, like the set of technical skills that you would need is uh, one, having uh, a good uh, understanding of uh, how things work at a system level. So courses like operating system uh, and embedded systems, uh, and then also having some understanding of uh, networking, like basic networking concepts. Um, so net, uh, I, I'm blanking on the names of the uh, courses, but um, generally like all the basic networking related courses. Um, and uh, for the programming, I think, we typically like my team is kind of uh, a product facing PE team than uh, any other regular PE teams. So I use hack a lot, but uh, Python is uh, Python and C++ are the two programming languages that production engineers typically use. Um, but what we're looking for is for you to have command over one programming language because then we know that you can easily like pick up because every other language is just going to be syntax and then how things are done. Um, so one strong uh, foundations of one programming language is uh, definitely useful. And again, uh, coming to uh, other things that are going to be helpful is don't be afraid to dream big and don't be afraid to speak up. Uh, that's how you can actually get things that you want to get. All right. Um, thank you so much for sharing. So now I want to shift the conversation to just really hone in on like your experiences um, of challenges, especially your challenges. Maybe you have it or maybe you have experienced challenges in tech by being a woman. So what would you say some of those challenges that you've had to overcome um, being a woman in tech? I can get started. Um, so actually, this is maybe not something that comes from me being a woman, but um, I'll talk about technical parts and communication parts. So on technical parts, I said that I was coming from an unconventional background. So there was a lot that I had to pick up on the way. Um, how, how do you code? I actually didn't know very well. Um, ML algorithms, I was very much skewed towards knowing statistics and not ML. So. I picked up uh, those things while working and I'm still picking up more. Um, I have a new natural language processing project and now I have to pick up more knowledge on that. So something I learned there though, is that I should not apologize for not knowing everything. As long as I have the basics down and I'm open to learn and I can learn, that does not make me a bad data scientist. That does not make me less of a data scientist in any way. So that was a valuable lesson I definitely learned on the technical front. Um, on the communication front, I think this is maybe related to uh, something coming from South Korea and maybe being a woman. Um, I was actually often not comfortable taking credit for the work I actually did. So instead of saying that I did X and it was great, I would say that I helped somebody to do X and it was kind of great and I had a part in it. And I just, you know, I just didn't want to brag about it. So something that actually I had a mentor and I was so lucky to have this person as a mentor guide me on is him asking me a lot of questions. Um, how are you using your time with manager? What are you saying to your manager? How are you talking about your work? How are you writing about your work in your in your self review? 
um, are you talking about your career with manager? And, you know, because this mentor kept pushing me to not be afraid to take credit when I should be taking credit. Um, I feel like I learned a lot through that. Thank you so much, Wahi. Sneha. Yeah, so uh, I, I think one thing that uh, typically everyone experiences this at some point of the time, some point or the other, and I actually had this um, also, uh, uh, sorry, I also experienced the same is um, imposter syndrome, which is basically thinking that everyone around you is so much better than you that you don't feel like you belong here. So I think in my in initial days at Facebook, um, when I joined, when I joined the team, I felt like everyone knew a lot of things and I knew like, I felt like I knew only a minuscule of what they knew. And I always uh, started feeling that um, I don't belong here. And I kind of had a lot of these negative thoughts. Um, but the fact was, I just started off with the company and I knew nothing about how things are done. And I knew nothing about the code and a bunch of other things. But at that point, your brain only starts looking at negative things and you fall into this spiral of just like thinking negatively all the time about like how you don't belong here, but not how, I mean, why would you even be here if, if everyone else uh, like, you know, if the recruiters didn't think that you are actually a good fit, why would you actually be here? Like, you never think about that. Um, so I I had to, like, fight that uh, for the first, like, three months uh, that I was at Facebook. Um, but I think right after that, uh, I actually got a really good uh, uh, review and a really good rating at the end of the half, which made me again, get the confidence back that yes, I can actually deliver, start like deliver a lot of things. And I ended up actually mentoring a new person on my team in the first six months that I was at Facebook. So a lot of these doubts, I had a, I had a um, manager who was really good and he helped me navigate through all of these things. And he kind of built that, uh, help me to get the confidence back. Um, so that that was definitely one of the first challenges that I faced. I also uh, had to face uh, another uh, challenge as a woman, which is being called uh, bossy. I know that we do have, we kind of, uh, so I, I tend to kind of like talk about things a lot that whenever I have questions, I am always the person who's like, I want this cleared up. I'm not someone who just like sits calm in the uh, meeting room, even if uh, I don't know what's going on. So for that, uh, I was kind of like called, uh, that, called, uh, called that I was bossy, but I know at that point it was not actually justified it was just an accusation that I was trying, trying to take over someone else's project, which was not the case. I was just trying to do what is right for the team and what is right for the company. Um, and uh, so when I had uh, something like this happen, I kind of dealt it in uh, a more, um, I wouldn't, I, I, I didn't, I was kind of emotional, but I didn't uh, actually, show that I was emotional, but rather uh, created a plan as to how do I deal with it. And then I had me, the person who uh, accused me of being bossy and my manager in a room and kind of bent point by point as to uh, why did you say this? What did, what made you uh, feel like that? And then kind of uh, understood what his intentions are, uh, sorry, what their intentions were, uh, but basically and then come up with a solid plan for six months to address the concerns of the other person uh, and then uh, I was actually appreciated for uh, the efforts that I took uh, into cha like changing the situation in a conflict situation into a more um, better uh, way of dealing things and building that trust within the team um, so that was another uh, challenge that I had to uh, go, like I, I kind of like faced. Um, 
so and apart from the regular speaking in front of people communicating and, and right. a lot of challenges which uh, which we yeah well thank you so much for sharing that um it's always important especially when we come from different backgrounds and we have different experiences that they share. Oftentimes people think um, when you work at an organization that you maybe don't have those, those challenges, but we all encounter challenges along our journeys um, to, along our journeys to success. Um, and as we're on those journeys to success, we find interesting people that we latch onto that we call our mentors. Um, so I definitely want to ask you all, um, do you have mentors and what is the purpose or, or the point for you to have a mentor in this, in this particular period of your career? Sure, um, I, can, I can go. Uh, so I unfortunately didn't have a mentor for a very long time. Uh, the reason, like initially I didn't know that I needed a mentor. So I didn't go looking out, looking for uh, one. And at the same time, there weren't many senior people in my team at that point. We were only like, all of us kind of like started um, together, like within two, three months uh, uh, difference in time. So we were all of the same age and there wasn't a senior person in the team that I can actually rely on uh, or work with. And so only, I think after being in Facebook for two and a half years, I spoke with my manager and I told uh, uh, him that I need a mentor. You know, like I think I'm not, so my manager kind of acted as a manager slash mentor. And there was this situation where I wanted some third person's opinion on things because I wanted to drive my career. And we were, me and my manager were working towards that. But at some point I felt like it is this his opinion as a manager or is this his opinion as a mentor? Because I needed that other person so I really, uh, I spoke to my manager and then um, that's when I actually, uh, we ended up finding a mentor for me outside of my org. Um, so I can like easily like talk to him, talk to him about things, not having to worry about being uh, uh, afraid and then being uh, judged, all of those things. So he actually helped me a lot in, uh, how do I have honest uh, conversations about career with my manager? How do I make sure I get clear and constant feedback with him? Uh, and you know, like a lot of other like technical um, things that he can help with in addition to, you know, how can I drive my career and how can I have larger impact, like bouncing off ideas and a bunch of other things. So I think with that, what I ended up doing is now I am actually acting as a mentor to three different people within my team and outside of me, outside of my team. And the reason why I'm doing that um, is because I understood the value of it. And I, I don't want young people joining Facebook to realize these things late. So I want to like kind of pass on things that I've learned to them and make sure that they don't do the same mistakes as me. Um, and I think it's been so great and I'm actually enjoying being a mentor as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the um, impact that mentor had, uh, mentorship had in my life. Great. Thank you. Wahi, what about you? I am so glad to hear this now you're giving back. I think people like you actually make Facebook into a community that I really love. Um, so I talked a little bit about my mentor who taught me about how to communicate, um, how I present myself, how often should I talk, how do I communicate differently depending on the audience and all that. But I actually want to go a little bit upstream since I dated myself and I went to college from starting in 2004. Um, I just want to go a little upstream and talk about the first person who actually sent me on a different path. So as I said, I came to the U.S. from South Korea, where the culture is actually just quite different. Um, so there's usually a set path once you decide on your concentration or your major, and you just go, you know, perform well in that predetermined course, course of things, and you're set for life. And, you know, as you know, that's not the case in, you know, in the U.S. in undergrad, right? And in undergrad, I was just taking a course, and 
um, I guess I was always on the front row and I caught the professor's eyes. And once the professor asked me after class, hey, what are your plans after you graduate? And I told him, oh, I want to go to grad school in economics. He was an economics professor. And he asked me, well, what courses are you taking? Who are you writing your recommendation letters? And I think I was either a sophomore or junior. I haven't thought about it, right? I haven't thought about all the things that are required for me to get on a successful path. And he sat me down for a whole hour going through you know, the book of courses, handbook of courses. We used to have those in 2004, guys. Um, and he just you know, picked out courses that I should be taking this year, next year, um, who I should be talking to about research opportunities so that I can get recommendation letters, all those things. Um, if I can't get those recommendation letters in time, what do I do to make sure that I can get into a good grad school? Um, and that one hour that he sat down with actually really changed my life, I think. And I think that's the first time I realized that having a mentor who can show me the way, who can tell me what mistakes I should be avoiding um, became really, really important. Um, if I talk about now, I am actually more on the senior side of things. So I have peers um, that I talk to a lot. I you know, when, before I make decisions, I often run it by them, make sure that I'm not making bad decisions or anything. So that's more where it's at now. Thank you all so much. Yes, mentorship basically plays a part in your role for, I guess, forever, right? Whether you are receiving a mentor or whether you want to give back and become a mentor to someone. So I just want to shift the conversation a little bit. Um, to talking about your experiences at Facebook. Um, so I just want to know how has Facebook created this space for you to be your authentic self and establish community? Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah, no, no, I'm saying you, you can go first. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think it's a theme that I keep on bringing up, um, the community. Um, I think it's important to have both the professional support that you need and also the social support that you need. And I've had mentors and buddies um, and I've definitely had more senior people reach out to me and offer their time. Um, like the person that I keep on bringing up. Um, so now as a manager, I actually am more proactive about finding people, mentors and buddies for my team. And actually for women in my team, um, I'm running a program called like Women in my Infra Data Science, where I match um, new employees with people who have been in, on the team for like a year or more. Um, and another thing that I want to bring up is we've been talking about mentors, but there's also the concept of sponsors, right? Somebody who believes in you, who has a stake in you, and who will set you up for success in a different way. And uh, more concretely, um, I have a director who's been in my work, who's been a support for me and who's been a sponsor for me. So um, as you can probably tell already, I, you know, I come off a little young. I, I'm five feet two, three, I'm short. There are a lot of things that might go against me if I go talk to a senior leadership. Um, and what he's, what my director, he, what he's doing is um, he works with the sweet teams he keeps on bringing me up as the point of contact for them to bring up any new projects, any headcount issues, any staffing decisions. Um, he, keeps it, he keeps giving me the floor and points at me so that I am recognized as an, as an authority, uh, even of a more senior people. So the other part of community is also having the professional support uh, from somebody who you can call as a sponsor, I think. Yeah, so I think for me, um, basically Facebook has been a place where I can be myself and then do what I really want to do. And I, the reason why I uh, say the same thing that I've said earlier is because I have worked in uh, Cisco uh, before I came for my master's and there, like the work culture there versus the work um, experience, the, the experience that I've had as a, uh, an employee, employee of Facebook, it's quite different. And when I started off at Cisco, I was a junior right out of my undergrad and none of my ideas were heard. Like they just brushed off everything. 
and they gave me work that was not interesting i didn't feel i was doing anything i didn't feel like working after like a year i'm like i'm doing the same thing and i'm not doing i'm not learning anything and i was not being challenged i literally was just wasting my time and which is the reason why i actually ended up doing my masters i i literally wanted to get out of um there i wanted to do something with my life so so basically i just like quit uh, after a year and a half and then i came for my masters and the experience i have had at facebook is so different i started i, I interned at facebook and as an intern all my ideas and like my voice was heard in a, in meetings with 20 people and i whenever i proposed uh, something it was heard and if there were uh, mistakes or if there if i was going completely off track people supported me and they kind of like guided me and then helped me to figure out how to do it right but it wasn't like yeah i mean it's okay it, it wasn't like that or like that was one thing that actually made me want to come back to facebook and then work um again like work as a full time engineer at facebook and through my like three and a half years of uh, being at facebook i never felt as confident ever in my life like now i feel like i can actually do anything if i really want to but whereas when i was in cisco or when i was uh, in, in any other uh, part of my like uh, life throughout i always had these doubts and as in in facebook my manager has also been so supportive that he actually helped me get new experiences every half like i did a bunch of things like i gave um i intern i i, I was an intern manager for uh, an intern for about like 4 months i um gave a tech talk for uh, a group of like 1200 people and i but it kind of like it did so many things that thinking back i feel like i have accomplished so many things in my uh, career which i never thought i'd be able to do as an engineer at cisco so i think facebook kind of like helped bring out the best in me and also like just be like help me be myself so yeah that, i think that that's what uh, i love about uh, being at facebook is you can be yourself All right. Can you all hear me? Okay, okay, I'm not on mute. All right, perfect. Um thank you both so much for sharing. Um so we are going to take questions from the from the audience at this time. So am I able to see the questions or um I think if you go to the link you yeah, yeah, sorry. If you go okay. to the link you should be able to. Okay, perfect. Let's see. And then people and then, can upvote them. You can put you can make them anonymous or okay. you can add your name. Um one of them has already been answered, so I think it's the top one that shows up there or the the imposter syndrome one. But okay. um we can ask it again if anything. All right. So we have a question right here from for Wanhi. Um Wanhi, as a data scientist at Facebook, does your job cons- or not your job mostly um or your team, does your job mostly consist of doing research or software engineering? So data scientist actually is a pretty loaded term. It can go from more anal- analytics to more researchy things. My team actually falls right in between. <laughs> so you can actually choose your job. Um you have to read the descriptions. If it says it's PhD required, it's likely that it's more of a research job. Otherwise, it's probably more on the analytics if it's only a ba- uh, bachelor's degree required. My team specifically, um we do more machine learning prototypes and productionization. So we take projects where we can have a data science solution. Um we come up with solutions, we ship it to production. um so that yeah the tools can integrate what we build does that help it's anonymous though um i hope that answers the question <laughs> yes so, um um actually i do want to go back to imposter syndrome a little bit if i may 
um, okay. talk about that a little bit. So I suffer from that too. And actually my ex-manager had to sit me down and he had to say, when he look, think about the things that you were able to do. Do you think that you got lucky every step of the way? Um, did you do a PhD in economics because you were lucky? Did you get in? Did you get a job at Facebook because you were lucky? Did you become a manager because you were lucky? And at point, you do have to be objective about the things that you are able to do and take credit for the things that you are able to do. And the other thing to make sure we do is uh, women have a tendency to think that unless we're perfect, we are terrible. That's just not true. As I said before, uh, technical things, I had to learn a lot of things, but as long as you're open to learning, you're open to growing, not being perfect doesn't mean that you're great. So I think those are the things that I would like to say here. Amazing answer, I love that. All right, so I'm gonna direct these questions to individuals. Um, so Sneha, do you wish you went to grad school earlier? I'm currently deciding whether to immediately go into industry or go into grad school as soon as I graduate. Okay, so I would definitely say if you have the opportunity to work for a couple of years before you go into grad school, that's the best thing because for even for internships, every company that I have seen, they so I think we, we uh, want you to have some experience working in the industry just because you know how things are done. It's, dif it's different from your coursework projects. Um, so having at least one year of uh, experience working in the industry has been really helpful for me and for a lot of my friends, I have known people who came directly from uh, undergrad to uh, their grad school, and they, they actually um, had to go through a bit of struggle to get an internship or even get a full-time offer. So that, that's how um, my experience was. And I really, uh, I think my work experience with Cisco, even though I didn't enjoy the job, I did learn. So uh, it kind of like helped me get an internship at Facebook. So having at least one to two years of uh, work experience before you uh, go into grad school would help. Yeah. You, then you'll, you'll kind of like see it with a different set of eyes uh, than just the academics. Uh, so yes. I would definitely agree, especially on the recruiting front. Um, maybe it's not full-time, but maybe if you have internships, I think that definitely balances you out and makes you a more well-rounded candidate once you do graduate from grad school, um, because it shows that duality that you have that educational standpoint, but you also have the industry. Um, I've had, I've known people with all school and has had a very hard time of finding a job. And I've had people who had little school so it really varies, but I definitely think that having the industry experience makes you a better, um, puts you at the at a better forefront. So this is an interesting question. Um, how has your job changed since being remote? Okay, I think, uh, uh, Vani, if you can answer that, that'd be great. Because unfortunately, after things uh, changed to remote, I've had a circumstance where I was stuck in India for six months. So I only came back to working uh, in the last month and a half. So only have like a little bit of experience working remotely. So maybe you can answer that better. Yeah, uh, but I'm also coming from a per perspective of somebody who's in meetings all the time. Okay. It's been hard. It's been hard. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have to be a, little, a lot more intentional about meetings that you have you have you have to be a lot more intentional about having an agenda having next steps concretely finalized at the end of the meetings um but we're we're going i can't wait to i can't wait to go back to the office to be honest yeah. like the things that i'm missing is like those coffee hours when you just bump into somebody hey what's up what are how are things going lunch hours when you don't have to cook and you have time to catch up with people. I really miss those. So I'm definitely looking forward to going back. I definitely miss the Facebook food in the mini kitchen and, you know, sometimes riding a bike randomly, you know, at headquarters. So those are things I definitely miss. Yeah. Um, let's see. 
I want to answer this question. Um, I think this is definitely more something that I can answer. How is discrimination from marginalized groups in the industry in general? Um, so in this person's case, being LGBTQ+, a woman and physically disabled. Um, so I definitely, in my experience, not only as a recruiter, but as someone who is also a part of the LGBTQ plus community, um, I have not witnessed any discrimination. Um, I definitely find that our organization bring, brings communities together, especially communities that share the same experiences. Um, especially when you think about um, who we are, I mean, how we've been playing a part in you know, the social justice climate that we are experiencing right now. Um, Facebook does a really great job of bringing not only allies, but people of the community to talk about difficult conversations that you will most likely not hear from at other organizations. Um, say example for Juneteenth, which is, you know, the day where African-Americans were free from slavery um, in Texas. Instead of us taking the day off, um, we were instructed to basically cancel all of our meetings and having a day on. And we had speakers all day just talking about the experiences from people from this particular community, right? Which could could have which was totally impactful because most times you have a day off, you're probably going to like, hey, this is more time for me to get sleep. This is more time for me to do X, Y, and Z. So I love and appreciate it that this was a day of learning. Um, when you talk about being um, your being physically disabled, um, I do want you to know that you it's important for you to feel comfortable to ask if you have any um, accommodations, right? So at the bottom of all of our emails at Facebook, we're asking what accommodations do you need? Feel free to read emails thoroughly and provide those um, and provide and provide those provide us with those accommodations. Um, but again, by being a team member, we have, um, we have organizations internally for people with disabilities. Um, we have summits for people with di disabilities. We go, to, we go to conferences for people with disabilities. So those aren't anything that we would discriminate against. Um, and as I stated right now, this week we are having our Pride Summit. Uh, which is usually if you identify a part of this community, you are flown to our headquarters. Um, no matter where you are, you can be in Africa, in one of the countries in Africa, you can be anywhere in the United States, you are flown to our headquarters in Milano Park. You just have a day of building community. Um, and we have those large summits for our Women at Conference. Uh, we have the summit for um, our Pride at, Black at, Latin at. Um, those are our main four big conferences that we host for underrepresented people at Facebook. So um, to answer your question, are there challenges that you, ex you may experience by having those, um, by having those gifts that you, you know, that you have? Most likely because it's the world that we live in, but will Facebook do anything intentionally to pro pro um, provide you with any of those challenges? Um, most certainly not. If anything, we will provide you with bridges um, to, to 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 close those to close those gaps of um, things that you are experiencing. So we are more than happy to consider you for any opportunities that you're interested in at Facebook because we love all people and it's our mission to build community. All right, hopefully that was a good answer. Um, so let's see. So why don't you basically answer this question? Um, how much of your day are you working? Are you coding? Um, let's maybe let's just pivot this to your team. How much would you say your team spends um, basically coding or doing research, or are they in meetings? I would say they spend. I hope they're spending seventy to eighty percent of their time um, doing coding or doing any research that they need to do to get the job done, and twenty percent of the time in meetings. Uh, for data scientists, it's actually a quite cross-functional jo job. You have to understand what the customers, so the uh, software engineers who are going to use your tools are looking for. Um, what are the latency requirements? There are a lot of things that we need to understand. So we have, you, you, we usually have recurring meetings to update people on where we are, get, get feedback. But other than that, my team should be working on coding 70, 80% of the time. 
Feel free. Um, what about you, Sneha? How, how much time do you spend coding? I think so right now, um, the type of work that I'm doing, uh, I'm also involved in a bunch of other people uh, related things. Um, so I end up only spending 50% of my time, but typically when I, when I have um, really like an intensive project that I'm working on, I am heads down working um, on the project for about like 80% of my time. I know a lot of uh, engineers who like who just start um, working with Facebook, they spend about 90% of the time uh, coding um, because right now I'm in a position where I have a lot of other responsibilities. I end up have, uh, only doing, uh, and, and I just came back to work uh, a, a month and a half back. I was in a, a long uh, leave. Uh, so only like about 50% of time I spend uh, coding right now. All right. Um, so we, we kind of answered the, would you recommend going to graduate school? Um, both of our individuals here are graduate school. So I would say definitely if you're interested in going to graduate school, most certainly go to graduate school. I, I can talk a little yeah. more about okay. that if you don't mind. Um, nope. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I, I think that in data science, at least, the jobs that you can get if you go to graduate school, especially if you do a PhD, is very different from the jobs that you can get if you do master's or bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in going deep into an area um, and doing, thinking about new algorithms rather than like applying those algorithms, um, I would recommend um, definitely going to grad school at a, not, rather than not going. That being said, during the time that you spend in grad school, people are working and that work experience also brings you leadership opportunities um, and it brings you communication skills that, you know, if you go to grad school, you're not going to learn. So that's the trade-off. And I think you would have to look into yourself and think, what do I care more about to make that decision? That's all. Okay, cool. Um, so there's one more question on our docket, which I think is super beneficial. Um, what resources do you recommend for someone looking into data science or production engineering? So for production engineering, there is a splash page, uh, which gives you uh, an overview as in like what production engineering is, how is the um, interview process going to look like, what are some of the different teams that are there within production engineering and some testimonials from some of the interns is like how their experiences have been and what are they pro the projects that they've worked on. I think- I'm gonna post it right now. Yes, thank you. So that, I think that should be a good uh, starting point. And there are a lot of um, uh, sessions available where uh, you can know more about what uh, PE does. And uh, there are some info sessions happening in the first week of November. I think that's where all the dates and links to it are also in the splash page. Well, it's too big for me to share right now, but I'll send it to your presidents and um, I'll have them ask for them to send it out for you. All right, for data science, um, as I said before, um, if you are in school now, I think classes are a good way to go about things. Basics of statistics, basics of ML, and some um, specialty areas that you want to consider are probably good classes to take. And um, make sure that you have some projects under your belt. Maybe you can work for a professor on a project together and learn from that. Um, maybe you can um, have personal projects during your free time and do some Kaggle um, type of stuff. But I think those two things will help you um, get prepared. All right. So before we um, have our distinguished panelists, um, leave us today. Are there any questions, any other qu lingering questions? Feel free to put it in the ping or come, come to the video if you have any questions. And to add one more aspect uh, um, on resources, I posted it in this, I posted it in our chat, but if you're interested in software engineering, every Thursday, 
we host a so you um, we host a crusher coding interview, which is a great resource to prepare for technical interviews at Facebook. Um, also, participating in hackathons, great resources, um, creating projects um, on the side, another amazing resource. Creating projects with you and your friends, an amazing resource. Finding a mentor that is aligned to positions that you're interested in is another great resource. Um, so, if you all don't have any other questions. Um, first, I would like to personally thank our Facebook representatives, Wanhee and Seneha, for coming to join us. Um, I will also send a, can we get a round of applause for our panelists? Thank you all so much. I love these virtual <laughs> round of applauses. Um, so yeah, we are going to be hosting another um, round of events if you're interested in learning about more opportunities that are available at Facebook, November 10th and 12th. Uh, I'll be sure to send that to your presidents as well. Feel free to join um, join us to learn about all the opportunities that we have at Facebook. In closing, um, do you all want to leave our, our consistency with any positive words of affirmation um, as they continue their journey in tech? Pardon me? Yeah, I'll go ahead. You're asking me and Sneha, right? Yep. All yeah, right. Yeah. So, I, I, sorry, I missed uh, uh, your um, what you're saying in between. I was saying, do you want to leave our our group with any positive words, any you know advice to close out? Sure. Uh, I think uh, one thing that I um, I think that that worked for me was uh, dreaming big and actually working towards it. So don't be afraid um, that, you know, like each one of us have uh, something special in us, which uh, is what we kind of like need to figure it. I know it's, it's difficult to figure it out, but just like try to um, look for something that you really enjoy doing. And that's going to be your uh, strongest point. Yeah, I wanted I want to echo Sneha in saying, you know, be unafraid. Just the fact that I should be looking a strength. Um, and just keep on looking at that to help me move forward was um was something very helpful to me a long time ago. So I would also leave you with that, that you should look at your strengths and move forward and don't be afraid. Yes. Well, thank you both so much. I hope you have an amazing day um, out on the West Coast. She's, um, thank you again. And thank you so much for ACMW and SWE for hosting us. And I look forward to partnering with you all again in the future.